Good morning and welcome to the Monday Morning Marketing Podcast. I'm Esther. And I'm Melanie. And today we're joined by Faye Strange of Strange Social and we'll be talking about Pinterest. Welcome, Faye. Hello, thank you for having me. You're very welcome. So Pinterest is a platform that we've probably all heard of and probably most people don't use, at least not for their businesses. They might use it for personal use. So it'll be really interesting to hear who and why and where and what and all the others um, about using Pinterest for your business. Yes. So what kind of businesses um, would you recommend use Pinterest in your opinion, Faye? So, um, so with Pinterest, you know, there's this myth that Pinterest is just there, you know, for rest to find recipes, or to go to if you if you've got a DIY project, you know, or you want to find a kids craft idea. But actually, or you're planning your wedding, or you're planning your wedding. Yes, absolutely. But actually, you know, there's a lot more to Pinterest than that. And it's, it's an opportunity to reach a worldwide audience on Pinterest. Um, so the businesses, you know, that I would recommend for Pinterest would be businesses who have, um, well, I guess, you know, you've got your two types of businesses. You've got your product-based businesses and you've got your service businesses. Um, so if you've got a product or a service that you can sell remotely or a product that you can sell worldwide, um, you know, Pinterest is absolutely um, for you. It can be for any type of business as long as you are able to provide that service to, say, a customer in America or in Scotland Okay, so it's a more global um, audience, really. So are there a lot of people in the UK on it? Or is it, do you find that, you know, the majority of the audience are in the USA, Canada, etc.? Well, the, the USA and Canada, obviously, they, they've got a massive audience over there. Um, the UK is one of Pinterest's biggest audiences, Um but it's very underutilized over here, um, especially by businesses. So there is a real opportunity to make an impact on Pinterest, especially at the moment. They're really, um, you know, they're really kind of pulling out a lot of stops to get creators and businesses on board at the minute. Um, like in 2022, they are going to be introducing um like monetization for creators as well so that's an exciting development to look out for next year i wanted to ask uh, exactly how much time do you think businesses need to spend working on pinterest because there are some platforms that are sort of moderately busier to manage um, like twitter for instance is massively busier to manage um, whereas Facebook would be less busy. So where, where does Pinterest stand amongst the social media platforms? So with Pinterest, you need to spend a bit of time at the start optimising your account. Um, so that that includes doing your keyword research, making sure your profile and your boards are optimised with your keywords. So it takes a bit of an um, investment in your time at the start. Then you really need to get yourself into a routine of pinning. Pinterest loves regular content. It loves you to be consistent. Um, so you can't really expect, you know, oh, I'll just turn up once a month, throw a load of pins at it and walk away. You really, to get the best results, you really need to kind of drip your content. So like a one pin a day or something as or one pin every two days if that's more manageable and how important is repinning you know if you, you've got your own pins that you create yeah. but how how important is it finding other people's pins and repinning those is that in, integral no it is not actually um not anymore pinterest really want their creators and their businesses to focus on their own fresh content um and when you're repinning other people's pins it 
it throws you it can throw your statistics off and um yeah pinterest have actually said to people that they do not want you to be pinning other people's stuff so much so you know the odd pin here and there is okay but i wouldn't make it part of your pinterest strategy you need to focus on your own content okay so you mentioned there about optimizing and keywords so that yeah. sounds very much like you know google and you know seos seo yeah so how scary is that for businesses so it's it's not scary at all and you know pinterest they want to help you as much as they can um they have you know when you type um, a sentence into Google and it comes up with the list of the most searched for phrases. Well, that that happens on Pinterest as well. Um, so if if you've got a keyword associated with your business, um, start off just by typing that in and see what suggestions pop up. Um, and they also have this tool called Trends, Pinterest Trends, and you can find this um, in your analytics under the analytics tab. Um, and it that's where Pinterest will tell you what people are searching for mo- most frequently. And you can type your keywords into that as well. And you will get like the top um, keyword searches and you can see how they are searched for throughout the year. So that's a really useful tool for planning your content for the next 12 months. It sounds that's... like a little bit like Google AdWords, that, doesn't it? It's very interesting. <laughs> Very interesting. And uh, now you were saying about dripping yes. your content. Yes. So one pin a day. Is there <laughs> time savers um, platforms that people can use that can help them? Or does Pinterest frown upon that? And then not, you know, we're talking algorithms and that sort of thing that we all know Zuckerberg and yeah. stuff don't like you pre-scheduling or using other tools to schedule into their platform is pinterest like that or are they nice (laughs) well you know pinterest say that it makes no difference um and yes you know there's a whole variety of schedulers that you can use um you know there's tailwind and you can schedule through tools like later and you know loads of other ones um and so, it, you know, if you want to publish a lot of pins, then that's a good, a, it's good to use those tools. However, Pinterest also has its own in-app scheduler that you can use on the website, um, which is what I use for my clients. Okay, wow. That, my, my mind is completely blown because <laughs> I've been using Canva. <laughs> yeah. You've been using Canva to schedule into Pinterest. Yeah, yeah I create the pins um, and and then I schedule them. Um, in fact, yeah, it's become a bit of a, <laughs> a bit of a crux for me. <laughs> yeah, but okay. So that that then leads me into another question: Are there specific size images that Pinterest favors over others? Mm. Yes. Yes, hundred um, percent. So your standard pins are. 1,000 by 1,500 pixels. Um, and Pinterest likes that because, you know, it's, it fits in the feed better. You're going to get better search results. It's easier for, for it to read when it's indexing your pins. So when you submit your pin, it goes through the indexing process where it reads what it's about for SEO, um, which can take a little bit of time. So, um yeah, so if you're making sure that you're optimizing the size of your pin, then it's all just going to help the performance of that particular pin. Um, and there's also, sorry, there's also another thing called idea pins, which are brand new on Pinterest as well. And those are the same dimensions as an Instagram story or a TikTok. <laughs> so, so what are they? What are idea pins? So idea pins are the new the new kids on the block on Pinterest. Um, Pinterest are really encouraging the use of idea pins at the moment. So I would say they're like an Instagram story crossed with a TikTok. Um, they're the same dimension. You can have multiple screens that people tap through. You can incorporate video. Um, you know, animation, all 
all of that good stuff to make it as engaging as possible. You can tag your products into them now as well, which is really good. So people can shop directly from your idea pins. Um, And they're really designed to kind of increase the engagement on your account and to increase your follower number on Pinterest. Um, The only thing with idea pins is that you can't link back to a website, which is why Mm. when you're using them in your strategy, you need to think of them in terms of engagement and getting your follower numbers up. And then they in turn will see your standard pins when you come to pin those. So how long do they last? Are they like stories? Do they disappear after 24 hours? No, they're there forever. And um, (laughs) they're going to be searchable as well. So making sure that you've got all your good SEO juice in them as well is important. So, yeah. Um, When you say um, SEO juice, is that hashtags? No, not hashtags. Um, you know, your keywords where you're writing them into the titles and into the little description. Um, and also you can add tags to them. So when you come to post one on Pinterest, um, you can select up to 10 tags, which uh, which helps the indexing process again. It helps Pinterest decide who might be interested in seeing that and how to categorize it. So. Yeah. Wow. There's just so much and my brain is now going, I need to be on Pinterest. I need to be on Pinterest. <laughs> Hang on. Hang on. Right. Are there any businesses that shouldn't be on Pinterest or that it wouldn't really benefit them? Not that they shouldn't, but that it wouldn't really benefit them to be police. there. And <laughs> did you just say the police? <laughs> Prison service. <laughs> Um, So I would say, you know, um, if you've got like a small local business where you serve um, local customers, um, like feet through the door, then it's probably not worth so much effort to be putting that into Pinterest. But, you know, if if you can reach people all throughout the UK or you can you want to reach people in other parts of the world, then, yeah, definitely go for Pinterest. Do you have to be like, you know, on Instagram where it's pretty pictures and pretty images and pretty everything? Is that important or can it be, you know, sharing your blog posts with just your one Mm. image or sharing about your services with just one image? How many like pretty pictures do you really need? So this is an interesting question because different visual styles appeal to different people um and you know obviously it's important to kind of to find a style that's gonna stand out on the feed on when someone's scrolling um but also again remembering different things appeal to different people so you know I always recommend trying a load of different visual styles you know it doesn't really have to be consistent on brand there's this thing called ugly pins um <laughs> and they That's a thing. yeah yeah it is you know and you're saying oh my gosh that pin looks so ugly but it does so well <laughs> um yeah so and also you know if you want to rank for a particular keyword it's a good idea to produce a few different pins and different styles so when someone searches for that and all the results come up you know, you're going to have a few different pins there in different styles. So people aren't necessarily going to think, oh, that's the same pin as that one. Um, it, it's going to look fresh. So um, chances are they might not want to pin on that one up there, but they might like the look of this one down here. So they'll click on that one instead. So it's a good idea to, um, you know, have a varied approach. And when you say different images, so infographics mm. and... Like, can you do carousels like you can on on other platforms too? Yes, you can do carousels on Pinterest. You can have video. Um, Video really stands out in the feed um, because not not a lot of people really use it. Um, And Pinterest really do want you to use it. So um, if you can put some video on, then that's great. Um, I find that, you know, really nice striking image that takes up the full the full area of your pin works well and then 
you know you can have your text overlay as well um you can you can just have a pl play about and see what works um i didn't know actually about video um so how long can a video be um i wouldn't recommend more than 60 seconds because right. people are people are just scrolling and um, they're not gonna stop and watch much longer than that and you want them to click through to your website so mm. yeah it's a good strong call to action within the video as well yes absolutely and another thing to remember that not a lot of people know is that Pint when Pinterest is indexing your pin, it can actually read the words on your pin image. So it's always worth making sure that they are keyword optimized and, you know, that the, the font of the writing is easy to read. And it's not, all, you know, when you get those swirly, swirly fonts. Yeah, yeah it's, that is, if you're using one of those, it's, it's still easy to read. Now, there's this RSS feed that you can get from your website um, that it can track pins, is that correct? Uh, it can uh, track stories and blogs that you put up that you can then create into pins, is that correct? Oh, I'm not sure about that. Um, neither am I, to be honest with you. I keep on getting this request that um, there's something wrong with my RSS feed, and I'm thinking I have one. Oh. <laughs> Every so, website has an RSS feed. Oh, I know, but I didn't think it was attached to my Pinterest. But apparently, oh. it's it's having trouble. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> maybe maybe you attached it years ago and forgot. <laughs> okay, yeah. I like I must two or three times a week saying it's a <laughs> problem with my RSS feed on Pinterest. I'm like, okay. <laughs> But it must, I mean, I don't know. I think a lot of businesses probably thought, I mean, when they opened, well, Pinterest is about 10, 12 years old now, isn't it? Yeah. And uh, so when it started and it, it was invite only, I remember mm -hmm. it was invite only at the start and nobody complained about it being invite only, unlike some recent platforms that everyone's complained about. Um, but it was, okay. Um <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> we'll cut that bit out because she just started talking to me in the corner here. Um, we probably all set up our Pinterest accounts, at least personal ones, when we were allowed or when we were invited to do so. But if they just lie there dormant or if they've got a few things on there, do they still generate SEO and still generate, you know, links or feedback back to your website? Like what would be the ROI, the return on investment of being on Pinterest? So, yeah, so if you've got an old account, um, you know, there, there are going to be pins um, that will be, that may still be doing very well. Um, I would make sure that your links are still working and, you know, that they're not leading somewhere that doesn't exist anymore. Um, yes, and so... So if you've got an old personal account like that, you know, you, you've got a couple of options. You can either turn it into a business account, revamp it, keep those pins in a board somewhere, or you can start a new business account from fresh. You know, maybe if you haven't got any pins that are performing and you just want a clean slate, you can start a brand new business account. Um, if you want to convert your account, um, and you've got loads of old pins there and you don't know what to do with them, um, I would say archive them. Don't delete them because then you can lose the followers associated with those those boards. So it's always best to archive, um, never delete. Um, yes. I, I just wanted to ask, um, does Pinterest advertising work very well? Yeah, it does. Um, I'm not an expert in Pinterest ads myself, but um, I know that, yeah, they're, I mean, they're, they're brand new. Pinterest, I think it only introduced, started interest, introducing ads last year, maybe the year before. Um, not a lot of people are using them at the moment. So there's a great opportunity there, um, you know, to be seen. And also um, just something to bear in mind is that they work differently to Facebook and Instagram ads, you know, your results kind of accumulate over a longer period. Um, I think it can take four weeks before you can start start to see results. Gosh, really? Yeah. That is a long time. Yeah, um, it's and it's all 
um, like I say, I'm no expert in ads, but it, it's all, it's all about um, you know them gathering the data on your Pinterest audience. It and it takes them four weeks to do that. So, like like Facebook, it involves a, an element of learning yes, it does, yeah. before they actually yeah. send out the ads. Well, that, that makes sense. And I suppose as it's as it's a new tool, and not people are mm. not many people are adopting mm. it, that it's a very slow moving one. Yeah. <laughs> Wow. Well, I don't know about you, but I I am very keen to try out a few pins on Pinterest and uh, see how they go and see what what works and what doesn't. Um, but what would be one final top tip to someone who is just starting out on Pinterest and just wants to see some initial results before they decide to continue using the platform? Well, my top tip would be to start by experimenting with idea pins. Um, If you want to start seeing results quickly, then idea pins are going to start getting you engagement and interaction um, quicker. Um, So if you can start doing that to get seen by more people and then start publishing your standard pins in the background, um, so while you're building your following, your standard pins will be starting to push out to your followers. And it can take a little while for those standard pins to be indexed for search. It can take like a few weeks for that to happen. So don't be disheartened if you're typing in search and your pins aren't coming up. It's because that process can take a little while. So strange um media what, what is that is that training or consulting or management or a combination of all of them what what do people approach you for directly so um i do pinterest management and i also do pinterest strategy and training so um i work with business owners um like i'll audit their accounts and train them um and give them a plan of action on how they can move forwards um as well as full management. And where can people find you? They can find me at my website, which is um, www.strangesocial.com. And there's also like a free mini course on my website as well. If people want to learn a little bit more about Pinterest and how it gets used and how they can use it for their business. Brilliant. Thank you very much, no Faye. Problem. Thanks for joining us today. And, uh, you know, it's it's a topic that we haven't discussed. It's the first time mm. in over 100 episodes that we have discussed Pinterest. Wow. But I think as marketers, it's definitely something that we need to look into and know about. Yes. So as to um, be able to inform our clients whether it would be useful for them or not. And uh, something that, you know, even the general public should be on yeah. mm. and looking for ideas and you know you're doing up your house so go on pinterest <laughs> yeah i think it's definitely a platform to watch um especially at the moment you know i'm talking with a few business owners who want to move away from facebook and instagram and they're thinking about pinterest so um yeah it's it's definitely um a great platform to be on yeah it's well, definitely so one to- no yeah. problem yes Thank you. We'll be back next week with more Monday Morning Marketing. Until then, bye-bye.